Andy Pirois for Boxing Social. I'm now joined by Frank Warren. Frank, how are you doing? I'm good, Andy. What about you, young man? I'm all good, thank you. Hello. Looking forward to Saturday night? Very much. I mean, you know, out of bad has come good. We had, obviously, Billy Joe pull out because of injury that left Martin without a fight. Now he's got a real tough fight in his hands with uh, Roberto Garcia. So it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a cracking little fight. I mean, how difficult was it to get somebody with Roberto standing to step in at such a late, late time? It was difficult, but we managed to do it. You know, Dom King looks after him. Don and I uh, have worked together and were partners for many years, so we very quickly made the fight. They reached out for us, we made the fight, and the fans have got, I think the fans have got a bit of a war. So I was going to say, what type of fight do you see it being on Saturday night? These are two guys that, as soon as the bell goes, they're, they're standing in front of each other. They won't, they won't be going looking for each other. So I think you're going to get a bit of a classic. As Martin comes through with a win, you mentioned that you're still going to look to get him a, a world title fight. You know, what would be the route that you'd like to offer him with uh, potential to, uh, champions? Wait. Sorry, we've got to wait till after the fight and we'll see how it, how it winds up. We'll see what happens with Bill. There's a lot of things up in the air at the moment. So once we get them sorted, once they get themselves sorted on, on Saturday to get this fight out of the way, then we'll be in a position to start looking at options. So I was going to come on to Billy, you know, what, what, what happened in the end? Obviously, we've come out with his hamstring, so what is Billy looking to do once he's fit? Is he still looking at giving Martin another fight, another chance? That, I don't know yet. As I say, we've got to see, you know, where he's at, what's, you know, what's happening. I've got to speak to the WBO. There's all sorts of complications as a result of him, this fight being postponed twice. So does that mean that mandatories are going to come into the equation this time round? Again, I don't know yet. I don't know yet, so we're waiting to see. So everyone's going to be patient, get this one out of the way, then we can look at what we're doing in the future. I was just going to touch on as well, obviously there were rumours floating about that GGG or Canelo would be offered, but that fight's uh, happening in September now. So is that how much longer do you think Billy would have to wait until one of them fights was possibly offered to him? He's got to be active. And, you know, hopefully if uh, Golovkin comes through, he's, he's talking about fighting again in December. Bill's in a position, he, and he, he keeps winning, and hopefully we can make that fight for December. That's what we want to try and do. And then we also have O'Hara Davies back in action. How, how much are you looking forward to getting him back on the bill and seeing what he can well, produce? Oh, I am looking forward to being back on the bill. He's got a decent little fight there. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's quite an intriguing fight, so he's, he's out to make a statement, and we'll see if he will make that on Saturday. And two of your most uh, well sought after boxers, or saying look to look to boxers in terms of where they can go over careers in Daniel Dubois and Anthony Yard. What is your what you know? How are you looking to push them? What is your plan pushing them forwards? Because there's a lot of expectation building around both of them. My plan is for them to both win on, on Saturday. That's what we need to happen first. You know, uh, Tim Little's is uh, sorry, Tom Little's come here and he said that. You know, he's, he's laid his stall out, he's told you what he expects to do, and he believes that. And uh, Daniel's a, a, a work in progress, but as I've said on many occasions, you know, I think he's the best, best young heavyweight I've seen in my time at this stage of his career. Um, he's done everything that's been asked him up to as yet. He came off a terrible flu last time out and still done the job. Um, you know, he's going to test him. He's, a, he's, you know, he's got a vast amount of experience. He'll be looking to take him into the latter rounds. He'll be looking to mess him around. That's what we say in the trade old man him. But that's all part of the learning process. So we'll see how Daniel copes and copes with that and whether he delivers. And then on Anthony as well, what, what do we expect to see from Anthony in his fight on Saturday night versus well, Sec? You know, Anthony's uh, 12 fights as an amateur. He's only had 30 ra 35 rounds of uh, boxing as a pro. That's down to the fact he's such a good and big puncher. So I'm just looking to get more experience before we move him on. We had an opportunity to fight for a world title that I turned down, so I don't think he's ready for it yet, experience-wise. Um, this is the first time he's fought as a pro of Southport. So it's another ex learning curve experience for him. Uh, I think this guy, he's never been stopped. He's never been on the floor, so I'm told. So you know he's durable and you know he's going to take him into the late ladder rounds if he can. But the thing about Anthony, he's such a big, he's such a big puncher, he's such a good puncher. Um, can he do what nobody else has done? We will see. You mentioned you was off of a Kovalev and a, a Baterbia fight was talked about as well. You know, how come you decided against taking on Kovalev or maybe looking at Baterbia? He's not ready for it. He's not ready. I'm not going to stand here and bang the drum and say, well, you know, like, like other people do, let make this fight, you know, it's a great fight, he'll do it. He's not ready for it yet. You know, these guys have got a wealth of amateur experience. Just about Kol Kovalevs and whatever. They fought in, you know, they fought in Olympics. They're, 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 they've been top quality operators. This guy, you know, Anthony's a novice compared with him. 
but he's a fast learning fighter. And as I say, he needs a little bit more experience, a few more fights, and then we'll let him off the leash. I mean, he's done everything that's been asked for him. And for a guy who's had such limited experience, he's done fantastically well and, and got himself in a good position in the world rankings. Obviously, the Buglioni fight was talked about previously. Now he's lost his British title. Is that not a fight which you guys are interested in anymore? You know, look, Matram had got three heavy, uh, three, sorry, three light heavyweights there. Let them all fight each other and, and Anthony can fight the winner. It shouldn't be any problem for them to make all those fights. You know, they're looking for Buatzi, opponent of Buatzi. Buatzi. Jose Burton's supposed to be fighting a British title. That's not happened. So let him fight Buatzi. Or let Callum Johnson fight him. There's all fights there for it to be made. And as Hearn said, he, he, he threw a big check at it. He said he was willing to pay our guy five figures. So he's got the money there to pay his own fighters to make those fights and we'll fight the winner. I was going to say, Buwati was another name which I saw rumoured. Would you like to get that one, that one on as soon as possible? Well, no, I've just told you what we, we are. Let them all go and fight each other and then he'll fight him. You know, Buwati's had, what, four or five fights? He's, had, he's got, a, got a wealth of experience as an amateur. Uh, him and Jose Burton, let them get in the fight and fight Colin Johnson. By this time next year, sorry, not this time, by early next year, we could be in a position where we can make the big fight that all the fans want to see. Their best against our best. That's an interesting uh, comparison that I can pick up on there. You know, Joshua's had the Olympics, he's gone through the GB route, etc. Everybody knows about Anthony's built it up for him himself from nothing, and he's well known, and there's a lot of anticipation around him and what he can do with his career. So, how do you juggle the two differences? What are your thoughts well, look, on the differences it's between it's them? a big puncher, but there's going to come a time when it comes to every big puncher that they don't knock the guy out. There isn't a fighter who's been a big puncher that suddenly the guy's not gone. Then, where do you go? You've got to have experience. You've got to have that in the that you've got to have that in the in the bank for yourself, and that's what we need to get him experience. I'm confident he catches anybody right in knockout, but some guys are elusive. Some guys are hard to catch. Some guys mess you around. He needs that experience. I'm not talking, you know, a long time of it, but he needs a couple more fights. And when he has those couple more fights, then I will feel, and certainly Tundi, his trainer, who's with him every day working, we will feel, let's go. I can make. I could have made him a world title recently. But I'd be doing him a disservice. I'm not saying he wouldn't even have won it. He may have won it. I don't know. But when he goes into one of those fights, I want him to go in there with with a lot of experience. It's in the bank for him in case, God forbid, he gets into trouble in a fight. He's got something to draw on. And to touch on the past weekend, Tyson Fury's return beating yeah. Safer Safari. You know, a lot's been talked about before. What did you make of it? Well, it made what it was. He messed around for the first two rounds, playing up to the, the crowd. And then he got, and then, then he caught the fellow with a couple of shots, and the fellow didn't want to know. He sat on his stall, and that was what happened. You know, we got it out of the way. It's his first fight. He'd been out of the ring for nearly a thousand days. I made it no secret from day one that I'd be looking to get him some, uh, you know, getting back in, in, getting some rounds under his belt, getting some experience, get the ring rust out of his system. We put him with a guy who went ten rounds with Ant with uh, Shah, Manuel Shah, who's the WBA champion, uh, regular champion, whatever they call him. I put him in with him and. Uh, the rest is history. It's done there. It's gone. You know, I'm not keep dwelling on that. We're on to the next one now. An opponent obviously hasn't been named yet, but Tony Belli has been talked about between the pair. Well, it won't be Tony that... Belli for his next fight, but I'm not. I'm quite confident if we want to make that fight towards the end of the year, I'm quite sure we can do it. If he really wants it, he's pushing an open door with me to make it by the end of the year. Well, Frank, thank you for your time. Cheers, Frank. Thank you.